Hello there and welcome to Arts Word brought to you by Derwent Valley On Demand. I'm Fliss Goldsmith and today I am absolutely honoured to be joined by an actress whose star is definitely in the ascendancy. You will no doubt have seen her on your television screens in one of her many guises and it is my pleasure today to be finding out more about the captivating Eleanor Tomlinson. Oh, that's a very sweet introduction, thank you. Thank you, thank you for joining us. So I'm going to start talking about where we find ourselves today, Eleanor. We are in beautiful Belper, which is yes. very important to a lot of our viewers. So I believe you now have family connections here. So yes. Belper is quite important to you as well. It is. I didn't know Belper at all until a couple of years ago. And then, uh, and then my mum moved here. And it's such a great little town. It's beautiful. I love it. It's got so much independence. There's so many independent shops and... It's just really great to see that, you know, yeah. in this kind of climate. You know, you've got cafes, you've got restaurants. It's it's pretty wonderful. Actually. It is. And I think living here, we are sometimes a little bit um, spoilt and we, you know, go to other places and it's not quite the same as Belper. But then when you reflect back on that, you realise that, you know, it is a very special place and there is a lot going on here. Yeah, there's a lot. It's a very, very creative town. I yes. love it a lot. Oh, fantastic. And as well as where we are, uh, I'm thinking about when we are, if you will. We are on the cusp of Christmas and December and most of us are making a list, checking it twice, and if you're me, probably making a list about the list, but that's my <laughs> problem. Um, but what's it like for you with your schedule? What is December like and Christmas specifically? Well, at the minute I'm mid-filming for Poldark Series 5. Okay. Um, so I have a couple of days off in the middle of filming which is very nice um, and very rare so yes. it's lovely but um yeah at this time i mean we're, we're normally mid well for certainly the last five years we've been mid poldock so it's busy um, it's busy it's a busy time but it's also exciting and we're sort of winding down for christmas we get two weeks off and then we'll be back again i think we finish in early february Excellent. And that's the final series that'll be it. It's oh all my over. Gosh. I don't think people will be able to like cope with that because, oh no. of course, Poldark is um, what has sort of catapulted you into the living rooms of the oh. millions, <laughs> um, and it's been so popular and so well received. Um, so you know, obviously, people have a great affection for that. Um, but going forwards, I believe that in January next year, you are hitting the big screen as you're going to be in a film called Colette. So would you mind telling our lovely viewers a little bit more about the film and your role in that? So Colette is about um, a woman called Gabriella Sidoni Colette who went on to write Gigi and she wrote a series of books called the Claudine novels. Uh -huh. And um, she was sort of um, a key player in women's independence at that time because she was writing but her husband was publishing her works under his name ah, right. and taking the credit for that. Um, so obviously, you know, with um, the state of affairs at the minute and, you know, rows about equality for women, it's, uh, I think, a very current film, which is very nice. And I play um, sort of the love interest of the lead character, Colette herself, played by the fabulous Keira Knightley. So that was a I bit special. I know. Keira Knightley and Dominic West. Yes. And, of course, Eleanor Tomlinson. Oh, what more gosh. does anybody want in a film, ever. quite frankly? <laughs> no, it was lovely. It was um, it was great fun filming it. I really enjoyed it. And um Yes, I, I sort of play this um, this character that she has this fling, I guess you could call it, this romantic uh, attachment to. Yeah. And they have a relationship together and, um, and it sort of inspires her to be the woman that she wants to be and to stand up to the norms of society at that time. Yeah. Um, which were for women to very much remain in their place and... This is about her really taking control of her life and eventually standing up to her husband. Yeah, and I think something you picked up on there, which is really um, interesting for me and probably for a lot of people, is the challenges that women faced at this time, but that they still probably face in some ways now. So mm. I'm wondering, as somebody who's pursuing actively a career in the arts, do you feel there are still barriers that women face and you know what needs to happen for those to, to be overcome? Yes, I think there are barriers that women face still, but I think what's great about our generation is that we are starting to see change. We're yes. seeing women come together, stick together, and stand up for what they believe in and for equal rights with, with men across all different industries, not just the entertainment industry, but also you know, across the world. I think it's important that women stand together and, and, and demand the equality that they deserve. And I think 
we're lucky and that we're starting to see a change. Yeah, there is definite progress, yeah. as you say, that uniting of women together, there is progress, there is a move forwards, but still a way to go. Yes. But a positive move forward, definitely. Yeah. With regards to your role, particularly, as it does challenge sort of societal norms and gender norms, how did you go about preparing for that role when you sort of, you know, first received your script? Um, well, I actually worked very closely with the director, uh, Wash Westmoreland, and Kira herself. Yeah. Because we had to, you know, find a relationship that was both, I guess, correct for the period in that we were breaking the period norms. So we had to of be course. aware of how women would have behaved in the time and then basically break that barrier. But also at the same time, making it about the relationship and the beauty of portraying that relationship and the freedom that they find within each other. So that was what we were working towards in our rehearsals and our my conversations with the director were very focused around, um, you know, us finding the, the beauty and nurturing that relationship. Um, and I think it's I think it's nice in the film. I think it comes across beautifully. So well, I'm yeah. very much looking forward to seeing it. And I think actually talking to you there about your role and how you prepare for it, maybe we as an audience sometimes don't quite appreciate how much um, time and effort um, and motivation goes into creating a character, to recording the film, mm. to you know, to, to what the end product that we receive. There is an awful lot of work that goes in there from is. actors and directors and from the crew. So when, you know, you do get time to to step back from that and take a little bit of time out for yourself, what do you like to do? What's a great day well spent for Eleanor Tomlin? I, I went to Hina the other day with my mum and we spent a full day going around the antique shops oh, in Hina goodness. and we just had the nicest time. It was yep. lovely. So on my days off, I like to be found far away from the sort of madness of the, the acting industry and all that business. I just like to be... Get lost in... Very the... normal. Yes. Yeah, I like Fantastic. to come home and see my family and, and see Bert, my dog, and just oh. relax, you know. Who wouldn't want to it's... see Bert? Well, exactly. He's, he's a star. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the star he here, He's the Bert. star, really. Oh, fantastic. Okay. The other thing that I'm very interested in is, obviously, um, you know, you are a very talented actress, but your talents don't stop there because you have an album, oh, God. Um, Tales From Home. <laughs> so, um, you sound fantastic, by the way. Um, but for me, music is a lot more about it just sounding nice. I think people are moved to sing because the emotion of a situation creates a song. So with that in mind, what drove you to create an album and to pick the particular songs that you have picked? Well, I was approached by Sony to create an album after singing on Poldark for a few mm -hmm. um, series. We've done that a couple of times now. And they approached me to make this album of uh, basically folk songs and with Anne Dudley, who does the music for Poldark. Yeah. She's the composer. So... It was um, sort of her at the helm and then together collaborating on this, this album. And my dad has always been a firm fan of folk. And um, for me, it was just very much about songs that I grew up either hearing my mum sing or, you know, that were my dad's favourites. Yeah. And it, it, sort of compiling an album and then roping Ross, my brother, into it. And, and then suddenly we had this actually really quite nice, um, you know, piece that that Ross and I have, have managed to create together I absolutely couldn't have done it without him he was brilliant and I was so nervous about the whole thing so I just don't consider myself to be a singer but it was it was lovely in the end and I think we've actually got something that I'm very proud of out of it because it was yeah. pretty terrifying and and that, I think that's really important isn't it that you feel that you know you've had a connection to it you've not just done it because you've been asked to do it, but you've been able to work with Ross. And yeah. Obviously, your mum um, is a fabulous singer, so you've got all those inspirations that you can bring into that and then have a finished album that, you know, means something to you as well. Yeah. So I'm going to finish with a hugely indulgent geek question for me, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm not sorry, actually, because I really always wanted to ask this. I'm a massive Agatha Christie fan. Oh, okay. And you have been in two of my favourites, one being uh, The Labours of Hercule, um, Poirot, uh, playing uh, Alice Cunningham. And then you went on to play Mary Durrant in the remake of Ordeal by Innocence. So I want to know what it's like being part of an Agatha Christie classic and working with the legendary David Suchet. Oh, wow. Um, well, the Poirot that I did was a long time ago. I know. Many, many years ago. 
But I loved it, and he was such a gentleman. Really? And it really is fascinating, because he comes to work as David, as normal, and then the minute the moustache goes on in the makeup trailer, he becomes Poirot, Poirot. and executes the whole day as And he's Poirot. so specific in his character. I mean, the way he portrays Poirot, I mm. can imagine that, you know, when he becomes like that, all the things that he has to then do mm. to still stay in character yeah. must be so consuming. I think as well, to play a role for that length of time as well, I mean, forgive me, I don't know exactly how many years it was, but it's an extraordinary amount of time. Yeah. And, you know, that one, that doesn't really exist anymore in, yeah. I guess it's, it is in television, but it it's so rare to come across an actor that's seen a character through that journey. Definitely. But, um, but to have someone who is just such a gentleman at the helm. And I'm so pleased so that lovely. he is. Because when you see someone on television and think they're wonderful, and then you want to think they're really like that in real life, so to mm. know that he is, it's fantastic. Yeah. No, he was really, really excellent. I loved, I loved working with him. Oh. And what about Ordeal by Innocence? Ordeal by Innocence was, was great. It was a wonderful experience. We were an ensemble cast. There were lots of us. And, yeah. you know, that's really great. It's always really good fun when you get a kind of big team together. Um, but, again, I loved it. And what, what's fabulous, when you do an Agatha Christie, is you work with the estate, and they're so protective of the oh, novels. Really? So, yeah, um, that was really interesting, you know, kind of hearing their feedback about you know as, as they go home and they watch the rushes and they come back with notes for you and it's oh, so that's really like an extra element yeah to add is. into the normal filming yeah. process Fantastic. but i yeah i loved both of them it was uh, i think there's such great storylines there and they're always so much fun there's something very british about it oh, that's I why i love, love it yeah yeah it's so british yeah it's just it's it was like an <laughs> indulgence it yeah. for me yeah um, me too. but Eleanor, thank you so much. I know you're really busy. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. I know you're off to switch on the Bell for Lights, uh, which will be a fantastic event for everybody. I'm concerned. really nervous. <laughs> it's going to be great. Fine. Oh my gosh. Everyone is so <laughs> looking forward to it that it's yeah. been the buzz of Belper for some time. Oh, gosh. But um, I'll have to rehearse my speech <laughs> to make sure I get it right. But thank you for joining us and for joining ArtsWord. People will, I'm sure, um, be really interested in what we've had to talk about today. And I certainly look forward to, uh, you know, watching what happens for you and the rise and rise of Eleanor Tomlinson, That's I'm very sure. Sweet of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching ArtsWord. Dobbshire. 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 D